Hi, one more video tonight, and then uh, I think it's time to take my dog for a walk. Um, in 4.1, we talked about random variables, and there are going to be two really distinct types of ran random variables. Um, one of the two that we're introducing in chapter um, or section 4.3 is discrete random variables. And then when we get to chapter, I want to say six, we introduce continuous. But the type of random variable really depends on the support values. So the random, the values that the random variable can take on. Um, the values a random variable could take on could be finite. For example, uh, the number of heads when you flip a coin twice can only be 0, 1, or 2. Um, I could also, this is another discrete random variable, the support values could be infinite, but I can line them up naturally, for example, with the natural numbers and count what they would be. So it might be an infinite, but it's what we say is countable. You could actually, you know, in, in reality we can't list them all, but we can see exactly the nice pattern, one, two, three, four, five, and match them up one to one with natural numbers. Um, the, so these are going to be discrete. So if you have either finite support or infinite support, but you could practically count out all the values, we're going to say you have a discrete random variable. Um, if the support is uncountable, then this is going to be a continuous random variable. And uncountable is something, again, there's an interval or there's a range of values. You can't you can't put your finger exactly on one value. It could be anywhere in a range. You're, you're never exactly right on one value. It's, it's, uh, it's not countable. So uh, maybe examples would help best. Um, here's some that we looked at in class. So back to milk duds again. I'm still stuck on those. A uh, number of milk duds in a snack size box. Uh, there's only going to be a finite number, and so your support would only have in you know, maybe zero, one, two, three, four, five. Um, number of frogs with an additional set of chromosomes. Again, finite. There's only so many of these frogs, and only so many of them would have this extra chrom chromosomes. Uh, number of libertarian voters in Terre Haute in November. Maybe zero, one, two, three. But I mean, it's going to end somewhere, right? There's a nice finite number. Um, back to the golfer swinging. Could swing infinitely many times before hitting the ball, but I can line it up nicely. You know, I could say the number of times uh, could be one. Uh, it could be two swings. Uh, it could be three swings. And, you know, I do agree. It, go, it could go on forever. I can't make dots here, but um, the point is it's, it, I can count out. I could really essentially say it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, let's give you the opposite. Um, uh, let's give you an uncountable. Um, the height of your grandmother. It's anywhere in a range, right? An interval, somewhere in an interval. Um, the amount of time you're going to spend on uh, test number one. Um, I mean, again, I agree. It's, it's probably in a finite range, but it, it's anywhere in that interval. It's any real number in an interval between... Uh, let's say uh, 0 and 60 minutes. So the type of support is going to influence the way you model uh, the mass function or density function of your random variables. So down here I just gave a couple examples that we talked about in class. And um, when you do define this nice function, I, t I told you in the other chapter we call it P of X. I mean F of X, P of X, they're all functions. Uh, a couple properties of this function. Um, P of x is zero for anybody not in the support. So if I don't list the support value, I'm assuming that its probability is zero. Um, the probability x is, takes on the value xi is just written P of xi, and all these better be positive. And the sum of all the probabilities that these support values better sum up to one. So I have this nice function P and it just defines the probability of values in my support and a couple of nice properties so again it adds to one they're all positive um, here's an example we used in class i gave um here's three possible different functions for p and notice that there's only one of them that's legal i mean i know this is illegal function a mass function because you can't have a negative and p of two is illegal because it sums up if you add these. 
um, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, it adds up more to more than one. So, um, and then the rest of this chapter is really just building functions for these random variables, like mass functions of probability x is equal to 2, 3, 4, 5. And I mean, this one actually, it, it, the outcome of this looks easy, but if you were in class, which like the other class, we actually spent a little time building this function. This wasn't something in which I just sat down and said, oh, it's x, you know, x, x minus 1, choose 1, and I knew right away. Um, we built this for, I mean, we built it first for the value x equals 2. I mean, what's the probability that he's done with this drill in two shots? That means he made both shots, which is, um, oh, um, 0.77 times O point seven seven and then what's the probability he does it in uh, three shots that means he made one out of the first two but he missed but he made one out of the first two and then he had to make the last one so he made one he missed one and how many ways uh, can you make one shot out of two. So that's where we got um, the probability x is three. So, I mean, we built this from scratch. We found a nice um, probability density function for it and then wrote, wrote it out. So it wasn't like it just came to us. It, it took a little bit of work. Um, same way with this one. We built it from scratch. This, you might notice if you took statistics, it's a very nice binomial distribution. Um, and then again, you can write it more succinctly this way, but, um, it, you know, it took us a while. I mean, what's the probability that you get, uh, no red lights and what's the probability you get all red lights? These are easy cases. And then in between, you know, just figuring out all the other cases, but the mass function is really just finding what's the probability at each of your support values for this random variable. And then the graph is very nice. You're just plotting, um, the amount of probability at a discrete point. And so we just did a bunch of examples. Um, minimum of two numbers when you roll a die. We switch from uh, a uh, mass function, and then you'll see down here we switch from a mass function to a cumulative density function or distribution function, just to see, show you how to go back and forth. Um, I guess I guess we started with capital F and went down to uh, little p, which makes sense. You can see I pick up probability at two. I pick up probability at four and I pick up probability at five and that's where that's where these values are coming from and uh, and then I did a little video clip um, this is really kind of funny I think uh, she's one of my favorites I can't uh, Molly Shannon I think she's really funny but um, here again we this didn't just come out we kind of this is kind of like the the Kino game um, trying to pick you know, with lottery or something, number su successful picks and unsuccess unsuccessful picks. But, I mean, we wrote out the first couple cases first and then saw there was a nice general formula for it. So with all these, we had to use techniques that we did, you know, back in Chapter 2 using counting or thinking about how to make um, probabilities. So it wasn't, you know, the, the random variable idea is nice, but the hard part, again, is finding the function that fits it. And, and in chapter five, actually, we'll start looking at classes of these random variables. So it does, when we get to five, it'll get a little bit easy, not easier, or nicer, I should say, for a while. Not easy, but nicer. At least they'll have a pattern. And right now, you're just trying to pick out density functions that go with any situation. So um, I think that's my, it for my videos tonight. And so let me know if you have any questions.